Okay, so today, Games Workshop hinted that they're going to release some Christmas box sets, which is cool, but also that means my deadline is now absolutely real. As luck would have it, I'm on my last model of my last Battle Force, the Star Pulse Cadre. The last model is this big honking dude back there. Don't know what it's called yet. Let's find out. This is the sprue. And these are all the flight bases I didn't use for drones. I used something else. This is the X XV-88 Broadside Battlesuit. I don't know this for a fact yet, but it's probably going to involve some magnetization. So, let's get started. So, I'm starting to build my broadside and this is the stage you know at the very beginning of the video I typically have the uh, part the, the mostly assembled model it's a temporary uh, temporarily assembled and I'd kind of show you hey look here's the plan here's what I was you know whatever I can I give you a rundown of the building process no come back um, anyway uh, it's going to be a little different here because, um, kind of right off the bat, I was reading through the uh, instruction manual, right, how to assemble this guy, and uh, I realized pretty early on that I was needed, I was going to need to magnetize, and this time I remembered to do as much of the magnetization internally uh, as opposed to doing it externally. Uh, that should kind of help me remove some of the seams, yada, yada, yada. So, for instance, typically, uh, here's, for example, the chest housing. It would kind of look something like this, right? Typically, I would glue this together, and I'd, it would be on the model. Um, and then I'd have to go, oh, you know what? I need a magnet, so I'll drill a hole in here. So I thought, you know what? I won't, uh, I won't glue this down so that I can kind of go in here and put the magnet inside here and then once everything is solid, I'll just kind of go in there and seal this up. Uh, and so it's one of those things that I I recognize as a best practice, right, to make it the cleanest possible build, but I forget all the time. And this time I didn't forget. As it turns out, <laughs> I probably didn't need to worry about this as much uh, because... Uh, so I am going to magnetize, but it's going to be a little different. So I'm not going to need to insert any magnets on the inside of this chassis of this hull. Uh, I could probably go ahead and just seal it off. In fact, I'll probably just do that uh, because the way the arms are attached. So here's a shoulder joint. You see this little ball. Uh, it's not flush to the hull. In fact, there's no really good way of making the, the arm flush to the hull. So say, for example, here's my... Here's the arm I wanted to attach. Um, you really can't make it flush. It's not like other models. Um, and so I had to figure something out for this and I have the solution. But before I go into all that, I just kind of want to point out that this has been an awesome build. Like, yeah, there's, there's flashing. Yeah, there's mold lines and you have to scrape that off. But that's part of every Warhammer 40k model and probably every plastic kit models although you know those vary in quality one way or the other depending on what you're buying but it just there were so many pieces and everything fit together perfectly um, there wasn't anything where that was warped there wasn't anything that uh, I, I it was just I don't know it, the way it's put together is really cool and as a matter of fact the way the kit is designed it's designed almost now I, I'm probably I'm sure that this is not the thought process but you know there's a non-zero chance that the people designing this kit made room for magnetization and I say that because um, so for instance we have this missile launcher system right so it's a missile launcher, it's like a glove, and it's attached to the arm. 
here on this humongous gun, probably the biggest Warhammer 40k gun I've ever seen. Now, I mean, for sure it's the biggest one I've handled since I've been doing Warhammer, but I don't know. Maybe the... I haven't done a ballista, but maybe the ballista's bigger. Um, anyway, it's a huge, huge rifle, right? But you'll see here, the arm is also part of the gun. And so they provide enough pieces, or it's designed in such a way that you don't have to like, uh, I have to kind of cut off the cut off this arm at the elbow and then attach it over here. Uh, there's a couple of parts like this. Uh, so for example, this right here, this is a, an accessory. It's like a shoulder mounted or like, well, maybe not shoulder mounted, but think of it as a shoulder mounted uh, weapon accessory. It's a, it's a, it's a bonus weapon system. And so there's two stacks of uh, missile pods attached to the central piece. This is the central piece that attaches to the model's chassis. Well, there's another option. There's this real or pulse rifle or whatever this is, plasma rifle. Um, it has its own central chassis, its own central support that it goes into the chassis. So it, it's almost like they knew that people were going to want to magnetize this. I suspect that's less the case, and I think it's, it's more the case that from a visual perspective, how models need to look like they're modular, right? They're mech suits, they're battle suits, and they're, by their nature, you know, artistically, the concept is that they're modular, right? They can pick up a rifle, they can pick up a missile pack, and so the art design probably reflects that uh, decision, but, you know, who knows? Uh, the point is, it was really cool. This gun, for instance, this is its own model. Like, basically, there's two halves of the gun, there's this weapon sight, there's this container thing, there's a shield. There's so many parts to this gun that it's its own model that you build uh, and, you know, probably want to paint separately. Uh, each of these missile fists, you know what, that's what I'm going to call these from now on, missile fists, uh, also multi-part and they look really, really cool. Uh, just this back piece. This is a, this is going to kind of seal off the, uh, the the mecha compartment, the battlesuit compartment. It's like three or four pieces. Uh, I'm just blown away. <laughs> Hell, this this missile. It's like the Tau answer to the hunter killer missile from the uh, Astro Militarum, or even I guess the the human faction. Um, it has a very cruise missile ish look to it, and it's made of a couple of different pieces. So. If you like the building aspect of the Warhammer 40k hobby, this is gonna this is gonna be your jam. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Um, if you're not really into building, then this kit's probably a little too finicky. But if you're also not into building, you won't be watching a magnetization video. So, you know, there's that. Okay, that's all the preliminaries out of the way. Oh, uh, okay, one more preliminary out of the way. Uh, I have gone ahead and created the kind of the the beginnings of the base because I wanted to settle where the feet are going to go, um, and so I assembled the the feet se the foot section or the the legs, and so I was able to determine where on the base it's going to go. Now this is going to be permanently attached. This base is one one thing, right? I'm going to decorate it or whatever but the feet are gonna stay there because I keep having trouble getting the Tau models to get on their bases, particularly if I'm doing something kind of creative with them where I'm putting scenery or, or like a texture paste or whatever. Uh, it's very hard to get the, the feet onto the models and when I finally kind of compromise once a model is built, I end up having to break a piece or compromising on the stance of the model. So my lesson here is Put the legs where you want them, figure out the pose, then once that's done, you know, you can decorate the, the base, not before your foot placement is settled. And this now has probably more surface area, more contact than any of my other uh, battle suits uh, that I've built so far. Okay, so the plan. There's, there's two... Hmm, 
there's two major areas that need to be magnetized with this model. And this is one of those models where I think it's worthwhile because you have two options. You have this humongous rifle and you have the missile fists. Right, you can't take them both. You can take one or the other. Uh, although it'd be kind of cool if you could somehow one hand this huge rifle and still have a missile fist over here. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that's not an option. Um, the point is, you have to be able to swap between the two. So that's one thing. The other thing is there's there's a, a there's a support system. So there's this optional missile thing where you can use these this extra missile pack, or you can use these uh, plasma rifles. Uh, and on the other side, you could also take uh, like a sensor pod and, or the cruise missile, right? So you can take one of these two and you can take one of these two. Uh, and so we're going to magnetize those and those will be attached to the chassis. All right. So that's the general plan. Let's talk about execution. So we'll focus first on the primary weapons this giant, giant gun. All right, so let's work on the very first part, which is gonna be the arms. These guys, the main weapons. So I'm gonna put away the side weapons. So we've got uh, kind of uh, two major components. Uh, it's the torso and we've got the arms. So the idea here is that we want to get these arms to attach here temporarily and then do the same thing. Swap these out here um, like so. Now this arm is going to be permanently attached to the gun like so. I haven't done that yet because uh, I'm going to do some drilling and all kinds of good stuff, and I don't want to have to do it around this uh, sub-assembly. I want to do it around this sub-assembly. So one of the challenges here is that you'll notice that the torso has a ball, uh, a ball joint, and that goes into this ball joint. And um, you could flatten this out, but it gets it gets challenging uh, because there's going to be some some kind of posability issues. So I think the way to go is going to be to kind of try to replicate this ball and joint assembly. So I can't do this with flat magnets. Luckily, I have something that fits the bill exactly, and that's these guys these are uh these are steel balls and they're paired off with these disc magnets that are countersunk so i don't know if you can see but the magnet is countersunk which means that the steel ball goes kind of inside there and what this does is it allows the magnet to kind of rotate around the ball and this ball is very, very similar to the ball that's already there, so it's going to help us preserve some of that freedom of movement, uh, but still being relatively secure. Now, it's going to be important to do this to both sides. Uh, you're going to want both of these magnets in there because this is a; these are pretty big, chunky pieces. You're going to want maximum uh, holding power. So to pull this off, I have to replace the balls that are here with these steel balls. Now the balls themselves aren't magnets, they're, they're just a steel ball. So I have to replace that with this. And this countersunk disc magnet has to go in here. Um, unfortunately, this magnet that I have is too big um, to fit in here nicely. So I'm gonna have to do some drilling, I may have to do some compromising, and it's very possible, right? So normally, I, what I would do is I would take this magnet and sink it all the way in here so it's flush. I don't think I'll be able to pull that off. I think I'm gonna end up having to have a kind of a wider uh, stance. Uh, this piece, I think, is just too thin to accept a magnet of this thickness. Now, maybe I'm using the wrong size magnet, but that's all I have on hand right now. 
if you're curious where to get this arrangement, uh, this magnet arrangement, this uh, countersunk disc magnet and the steel ball, um, I got these at uh, the Magnet Baron, and they are part of. So they have this version of a flight base in case you don't want to use the normal flight bases that come in your uh, Games Workshop models, where you glue this clear acrylic post to this fake rock. This goes on your base. And then on here, you glue your steel ball. And then the countersunk disc magnet goes uh, under your flyer, kind of like this. Uh, I've used it for a couple of flyers. I don't have a lot, but I have like a, I have a, like a, a, a speeder bike, or a, what are those called? Like a storm something? It's that uh, Space Marine kind of two-seater open pod thing. Uh, and I've done this with a couple of drones so far, although I haven't really posted a video on those yet. So that's where I got these from. And so this particular set is a little large. The disc mag, I mean, I love the strength of it, but it's too large. Uh, thankfully, I had a different kit. Uh, I think it's like a medium sized um, flight stand. And so this is what I'm going to use. So. In case you're curious about getting these, um, so I'm cannibalizing from a uh, the flight stand. It's the the posable flight stand um, kind of a product. I don't know if you can get these countersunk magnets and steel balls separately. You might. I just haven't seen them. But then again, I haven't gone looking. So that's what you'll need. So the very first thing I'm going to do is clip the balls. Oh, that sounds horrible. I'm going to clip these balls, jock, uh, ball joints off of the torso. Uh, let's get dirty. Like so. And like so. Now, before I sand this down, uh, I think what I'm going to need to do is actually, uh, so if I try to glue this onto this flat surface, I'm going to have a very bad time. So I actually need to create a kind of a divot right there so I can sink this ball in. Not all the way, just a little bit, just enough surface area to give my super glue some room to work in there. So. I'm going to start off with this attachment uh, for my rotary tool. I think it's like a grinder. It's a little, it's a little stone. It's a cone, um, and I think it's going to be a good way of getting um, a divot rather than a hole there. And we'll start off with the slowest setting and work our way faster if we need it. I ended up having to carve the initial hole with this engraving tool, and then once I had a decent hole, I ended up with this larger kind of grinding stone. And the result is that. You see the hole? So it's not a hole, it's like it's a divot, but it's a, the right shape, right? And so <clears throat> into that is going to go that steel ball. Now, I don't know that super glue is the way to go here, but I also don't know that it's not. So that's what I'm going to try first, uh, because the alternatives are to kind of get some epoxy putty and, and do some stuff that way, and I may end up having to go there, but it's a lot more work than I'm going to do uh, if I don't have to. So I'm going to give this a shot. Maybe this will work, but I'm not holding my breath. Super glue and metal just they, they don't really get along. At least in my experience. Alright, the balls are glued down. I'm gonna let them dry. I hope that works the way I expect it to. So this next step is to prepare the arms. Right, so I have two missile fists to prepare, and I've got a gun 
and I have the supporting arm. So there's four of these uh, sub-assemblies that I need to work on. And as we discovered before, uh, we're gonna need to modify the shoulder piece um, to get a magnet of this thickness in here. Uh, Uh, I think I'll be able to pull it off. I'll just have to be careful. So I'm going to take that hole and widen it out quite a bit. I might even hollow the entire shoulder or at least a decent portion of it and then fill it with uh, epoxy putty and then sink the, the, the magnet inside. And you want to make sure when you do that, or I need to remember this, is to make sure that the countersunk side, the side with the curve to be facing outside so that the ball will be able to rotate. For this job, I'm going to use this tool. It's like a, I don't know, it's a cylinder kind of bit. Uh, it doesn't do a great job of going in, I don't think. I haven't used it before, but I think, eh, maybe it's too big. Let me try with this guy. This is a an engraving bit. It's just a little larger than the other one I was using. Yeah, it should help me widen that up pretty nicely. Yeah, I had to use a couple of different bits, this engraving bit, this cylinder bit, but I finally got the hole in the arm to be the right size. And I even got a decent amount of depth to it. Uh, I just needed to be persistent. So this magnet, I can sink it right in there. Um, so I'm going to mix together uh, some epoxy putty so that uh, this magnet placement will be permanent. And yeah, that should work. Before I do any of that, however, I need to do the same thing to this other arm. I got, I got a decent start, but it's not deep or wide enough, so I have to so work on that. And then I'll have to do it for these two. That wasn't as painful as I expected. Either I'm getting better at this, or this was just abnormally easy. So there you'll see the ring, there is the, that's the countersunk magnet, and I pushed it into the uh, epoxy putty that I filled the kind of the hole I carved out. Uh, so it's done for both missile fists. I, I just can't get tired of saying missile fists. And then both of these things. Uh, so they're gonna dry for a while. Uh, when they dry, I'm gonna clean up the edges a little bit and all that kind of good stuff to make it look presentable, but uh, it's basically done. I've got the uh, the balls on uh, the ball socket joints, and I've got the accompanying thing here. The really nice thing about this particular setup is that since there's only one magnet, um, there's no um, there's no polarity check. Um, as long as the countersink is oriented the way you want it, and since I've done I'm done with this thing, uh, I've glued it all together um, because. Uh, so A, because I was done, but B, because this next step doesn't need uh, access to the interior. So the next stuff is these support weapons. So there's like, there's this uh, cruise missile thing, there's this uh, missile pack thing, uh, and these are attached to the mech, to the battle suit right here. So right behind the ball joint, there is this little thing right there. And so there's this, th there's this little piece that connects it right up oh, like so and there's a little tab up top that's where i'm sorry there's a little slot up top and that's where this tab goes uh kind of like that if you were gluing it it would look a bit like that. so i haven't glued the uh, the the missile thing all, all the way together uh because uh, here's where I'm going to magnetize. So the good news is that I don't have to magnetize this. I don't have to uh, remove this uh, on the daily, so I can fix this uh, in whatever orientation I want. Uh, I haven't glued it yet because I don't know yet what it's going to look like. So depending on how the arms look, uh, maybe I'll want this facing kind of up or maybe kind of, you know what I mean? Like I can, I can move it around. Once I see how it fits with the arms on it, then I'll be better able to decide uh, how I want it oriented. But that means I know that this is the piece I'm going to magnetize because I want this missile to switch with uh, this sensor pod. 
Now, this is the only place that I've made a um, made a, a compromise because uh, you could use this sensor pod. There's a couple of other sensor pods that you could use, but they're basically the same thing. Uh, there's another one that you could do, but it involves using a piece here. Um, and I'm not willing to give up the use of this piece. So, this is going to represent every sensor pod possible, and I've used this one Uh, because it's the most ornate. It's, it's the most complicated. There's a lot more going on. So I'm going to use that one, and that's going to be my proxy for all the other ones. They quite honestly look a lot like this one. Uh, the, the one that doesn't look a lot like this one is still just a sensor pod of some sort, and it takes up a valuable piece. So that's the way it's going to go. So uh, I'm going to drill a hole here, sink a magnet in there. I'm going to take off that tab, sink a magnet in there, and take off that tab, and stick a magnet in there. Should be pretty straightforward, but this is a little more finicky because the pieces are smaller and so there's a higher there's a higher consequence for error. So, as is my custom, I start with the snipping of the tabs. Okay, I checked out my box of magnets. I have a plan. And the plan is to use this magnet. It's a pretty beefy one. Let's see what size we're talking about. Looks to be about... Yeah, so this is a 5 by 2 millimeters, so 5 millimeters in diameter, 2 millimeters in height. And it, now it's a pretty big piece. Uh, as you can see, it's white. It's actually whiter than the place it's going to go, um, but that's okay because I've compared it and it looks like I'll be able to kind of sink half of it in here. So if I put half of it, we'll have a, like a little hemisphere sticking out of that uh, out of that piece, and I think that's going to be okay. Uh, and I've checked the size here, so where it's going to sit. If I have a half disc sticking out of that, it's going to fit just fine. But more importantly, it's going to give me the strength to hold up this monstrosity. Uh, it's probably, you know, probably too big, but it'll do fine. Uh, it's going to be a little weirder on this one. So we're going to have to take some compromises here. Uh, but that's okay. Uh, the idea is I want these to, to, to hold. And once they're painted up, I think it's going to look fine. It, it'll, it'll be, it'll look like part of the model. Uh, I'm not going to... I'm not going to uglify anything here. Not At least I don't think. So, I'm going to carve out kind of a half hole on this piece to which I can glue a magnet. Then I'll whittle this down a bit to glue one of these disc magnets on top of it. So I'm going to have to kind of drill into that, kind of carve it out a little bit. Should be fine. Quite the right size drill bit. So I'm cleaning off these pieces a little bit. They're going to end up having to be sanded, but just want to scrape off some of this epoxy putty while my pieces dry. And I think they're done. Ah. Okay, there's one. There's two. Okay. So these are the side pieces. And so, when they're drying, I let the stack stay there. They help stabilize stuff. And so, this is the uh, the part that will contain the pulse rifles or plasma rifles, whatever these are, like that. And underneath here, we have that magnet. And that magnet goes on this piece right here that gets attached to the hull like so. Same thing with these missile launchers, these missile pods. This is the piece that holds the pods together. So I'm just kind of testing the fit 
going to be a little tight on this one because the missile pods want to be up close. Right. So that should work like this. We have that missile pack with the magnet underneath. And that should be attached to the other piece. Uh, if I can find it. Ah, here it is. This piece right there. So, I'm about ready to make some of these permanent. Let's make with the glue, shall we? So that's what this is going to look like. Normally these canisters are, are pointing down, but I think they're going to look more fun pointing up. And it's going to make it easier for me to paint this sub-assembly together. Let's test this other piece, which is my cruise missile, my hunter killer thing, and uh, an, an, uh, my hunter killer an, uh, analog. It's gonna go on there, and it'll be swappable with that guy, the sensor pod. We have done it. We have magnetized everything we need to magnetize. Let's see what this looks like. Kind of like so. Kind of like so. Now, they're a little on the squishy side. I could use a little bit more friction uh, on these, but they kind of work. The real test is going to be this gun because it's really heavy. And so when we attach the arm here, kind of like so, hey, you know what? It holds in place. This actually worked out. And it didn't take me a whole week. It took me a couple of hours. I am so stoked. I am so happy with this outcome. Okay. Magnet magnetization is done. At this point, I'm just letting some of these pieces dry. So you'll notice my legs here. I've got them positioned. And it's feeling okay. I'm hoping that this setup is going to be able to hold all of this nonsense. All right, so I'm gonna let this glue drew over. Uh, <laughs> I'm gonna let this glue dry overnight. I'm not sure what was happening in there with my words, but that's gonna be the stance. I've adjusted the hip here, so it's leaning forward a little bit. Um, although I could probably come back a little bit. Um, I've had this problem with my, with my battlesuit models for my Tower Army. To be, they're usually facing kind of backwards, uh, but not facing backwards, but they're leaning backwards. And so I wanted to make sure this one's leaning a little bit forwards to kind of give it, give it some variety. But, man, we are so... We're, we're done with the magnetization. I am super excited. Uh, okay, so this next step is going to be me priming. So I'm going to take all these sub-assemblies. Once they dry, I'm going to take them outside, give them a light coating of my primer and that way you'll see what these pieces that have all these magnets stuck to them uh, you'll see what they look like so you can kind of see that they're they look like they're meant to be that way um, it should be a fun time all right i'm a prime and then i'll show you the result well i really thought it was done with this video so I did the whole wrapping up section of it. Um, but uh, I proceeded on to the painting part of it, as you can kind of see here. Uh, that's going to be a future video. But I realized I wasn't done magnetizing um, because I thought this was going to work, but it actually didn't. So I glued this arm to this gun. And so the idea is that you, you glue this together once you're finished painting them for the most part, and then you mount them here. The thing is, I don't know if you can tell, it doesn't go on. It has to be able to wiggle to be able to slip onto those ball joints, and super glue don't wiggle. So, um, if I'm going to be able to mag interchange these arms for these uh, missile arms, I'm going to have to magnetize this, or somehow come up with a wiggly 
mounting system here, and that's not going to happen. So I need one more magnet, or actually two more. I'll get to that. So I need to magnetize this arm to this gun, not because I'm going to swap out the arm and the gun combo. It's just so that I can get the gun onto our model here. So I'm going to magnetize here and here. And then once that's done, I should be able to mount these on here. And as long as I'm touching up this magnetization pro project, um, I was going to be content with just gluing this pauldron to one arm. And then when I mount the missile arm, you know, it didn't get a pauldron. It was just going to do this thing right here. Or I guess this would be the appropriate one. But as long as I'm redoing some work, I might as well make this pauldron magnetizable so I can just swap it over since I only have one of these. Uh, it's not at all necessary, but you know what? I'm going to redo it. I might as well redo it the right way. So uh, I'm going to start work on this, and I absolutely hate the idea of... of... Uh, like messing with a with a model that's been painted but I don't have a choice in the matter this time around so so you can avoid this mistake in the future after you watch this video I'll do it here I'm gonna start to magnetize so I snipped the tab that's on the hand I'm gonna break out my drill, make a hole here. Since there's already a hole here, I'm just gonna make sure it's wide enough to accept a magnet, make sure the polarities are correct. But first I need to clean the surface a bit because it's got super glue and paint and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so here's the plan. For the gun, um, well, for the gun and arm attachment, I'm going to use two different size magnets uh, because I want this to be the strongest bond possible, but uh, this hand is kind of too small to use a magnet that I want to use. So I want to use a magnet about this size. So this one right here is a five millimeter diameter magnet. Uh, a five millimeter, uh, that width won't fit on the arm not without some major concessions and grossness, so uh, I'm not going to do that. Instead, what I'll use is one of these, which is two millimeters um, in diameter. That'll fit nicely in this one spot right here. So I'll have the big magnet here, a little magnet there, and hopefully combined, there'll be enough for a firm hold. Uh, this, this will be a good fit right there, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to widen up that hole in the gun using this, I don't know, whatever attachment this is. Uh, I don't have a drill bit that's wide enough to do the job. As is often the case, a single drill bit is insufficient for uh, the task at hand, I have to use a combination of drill bits, but I got the cylinder drilled out. Started off with that drill bit that I showed you earlier. This guy. Ugh. This guy right there. And I swapped it out with this guy right here. It's kind of a cylinder cutter. It uh, does a jo good job of cutting uh, around its sides, horrible at making it deep, uh, which means I get a nice flat surface on which to glue my nice flat magnets. And so the hole is deep enough that I can sink a single magnet without too much trouble, and it'll still be lower than flush. And I don't want to make it too much deeper because um, this is in two parts. I don't want to weaken the bond between the, the two parts of the gun. You put down a drop of super glue. Could use epoxy putty for this, but I don't have any pre-mixed, so I'm just going to go with this. Should do the job just fine. So the glue's dried, and it seems to be working. So the arm is now magnetized to the gun, like so. I will say that having it magnetized kind of allows for a bit of freedom of movement, but it's not really great because 
the the joint does kind of move around it, so it's going to end up resting kind of in one spot. Um, once you know when it's magnetized, it'll hold kind of right here. And I don't know that having a stronger magnetic bond here would do the trick. Uh, I need to find a way of introducing more friction so that when I kind of have it this way, it'll stay this way. But um, having it magnetized allows for us to be able to move it up and down um, because then this joint rotates around the axis here. Not something that you could do if it was magnetized. If it was, I'm sorry, if it was glued, if it was glued, you kind of have this one pose, and then that's kind of it. Uh, you see how that arm wants to rotate? So magnetizing might be uh, almost necessary from that perspective. Um, but yeah, I'm not really happy with with how it hangs. Um, I don't know, maybe some hot glue would kind of help that a little bit. I don't know. So, that's something to think about. Uh, also, yeah, uh, also maybe a stronger magnet combination, like maybe having two on a side, or maybe having a slightly larger magnet might help in this case. Uh, it's just, it's not a particularly strong uh, hold the way I have it here. Um, it does the job, but it doesn't do the job as well as I would like. So, something to think about as you're magnetizing your model. So the last thing that to do is to magnetize this pauldron to this arm so that I can switch it around and have it magnetized to this arm as well. Uh, kind of like so. So what that involves is going to be adding magnet to the back of this pauldron and then shaving this down a bit or just drilling a hole onto the onto the, the shoulder um, and mounting a magnet there. Uh, kind of have to figure out though how you want it mounted uh, because you could mount it on on So you can mount it on this face, the one that's kind of vertical with the shoulder, or you can mount it on this face, which is diagonal to the shoulder, and it's going to look different depending on which uh, which way, which surface you mount it on. So here it is on the diagonal, kind of looks like that. Here it is on the vertical, kind of looks like that. I'm thinking it's going to be the vertical face that I want to add it to, because the the vertical kind of leaves something to be desired. Uh, I think the the diagonal is going to work a little better. It's going to interfere a bit with this. Either way we go, this uh, this little mounting uh, this hard point for the shoulder mounted weapons. It's going to interfere with that. E either way we go. Uh, so let's say for example we add this guy. Yeah, it's going to look a little weird, but I, I don't know that it would look any different if it wasn't magnetized. So I'm thinking it's going to be the diagonal face. So I'm going to drill a hole right here, right here, mount a magnet there. I'm not going to do that here, but you can make that decision. You can choose to mount it here this way or here this way. Either way will work, it's just going to look a little different on your model. So, all right, I'm going to go with the largest magnet I can mount uh, because I want it to be a pretty firm hold. I don't want it to fall off whenever I'm mess touching it. So I'm going to go with these. These are five millimeter in diameter by, I think it's two millimeters in height. And in this case, there's a countersunk magnet inside the shoulder already, so the orientation matters. If I if I mount it this way, it'll attract. If I mount it this way, it'll repel. So it doesn't fight me every time. So this orientation is going to be what I want to go with right here. And I also have to be careful when I drill into this not to hit the back of that magnet. So that should be interesting. Let's start. Let's start by making a guide hole. The guide hole is going to be right 
there. And so that's what the hole looks like. I'm going to clean off the edges a little bit because there's some melted plastic there. Make sure it's as smooth as possible. Yeah, it's going to look a little janky by itself because it's kind of a tight fit. It's probably too big a magnet to include there, but um, it should be it should look all right with the pauldron attached. All right, here is my magnetized broadside. I think that's what it is. Now it's fully magnetized, and that includes this pauldron. Magnets in the back. Here's a magnet on the arm. Uh, it looks out of place because this hasn't been painted, but uh, it should look a little less weird than this. But it doesn't matter because it should be covered at all times by the pauldron. And so there we've got the arm and its companion arm right here. Uh, it's still a little wobbly. Um, and the same thing goes for this arm, which is going to be holding the weapon here and magnetized there. Uh, so a funny thing happened when I went to magnetize this specific pauldron, and that is that the polarity of this disc, this uh, recess, I forget what it's called, countersunk maybe, uh, magnet, uh, it's kind of fixed. And so the magnet here, in order to uh, attract itself to this guy, had to be a certain orientation and it conflicted with this guy so I can't control the polarity of this I can invert it but then I can't use the the recessed part uh, so there's no inverted polarity here so this one was a little harder to to glue down but it was fine uh, but it does seem to ameliorate or weaken the effect of this magnet here it's a little easier to, to take off because some of it's re attracted to this steel ball and some of it is repelling um, that magnet so it's a little it's a little on the odd side but it does the job sort of and I'm still looking for a solution so that this doesn't kind of fall constantly and I think maybe I just need to accept the fact that I need to add a thin layer of sticky tack to the inside of these. Alright, so it's time for the recap portion of this video. I've got my magnetized broadside right here. Right there. And uh, so I discovered a number of problems along the way, but uh, some of the solutions may have worked uh, sort of, kind of, but I'll recap all the uh, options here. So we've got, we'll start off with these guys right here. This is the sensor pod and that goes on to this hard point so the sensor pod right here goes onto that hard point right there on the side and you can swap it with this missile or this missile pod or this plasma rifle pod thing and so each of these missile, uh, each of these components can go on either side of the model. So we've got that piece. Let's just say maximum weapons. We've got these missile fists. These are magnetized, so they go on and off, and that allows us to switch this over with this. BFG, that's what I'm calling it now. Uh, and you can see how it's pretty, pretty loose fit. Um, I've tried to add something there to increase the friction, it's just not working. So there it is. 
And so normally you wouldn't see all this painting uh, on the model, but uh, I got the order kind of mixed up a little bit because I had to do some after painting uh, adjustments. I didn't discover that the supporting arm had to be magnetized until well after this magnetization video I thought was over. The last thing that I did was I magnetized this pauldron. So it goes on like so, and you can switch that out with the missile fist arm, and that's it. Quite a quite a bit of work went into this. Uh, it was pretty pretty straightforward. Uh, there's some things I'm uh, I'm pretty happy about. There's some other things I'm not so happy about. Um, I've talked this friction issue to death. None of the things that I tried seems to work. In fact, it may have made it worse. So maybe consider not adding <clears throat> any anything to the underside of that pauldron. Uh, I think maybe it's just making things a little worse. At any rate, um, this is the magnetization uh, for the broadside. Uh, it's a really cool model. It's going to give you lots of options on the tabletop. And uh, it's a fine little magnetization project. Uh, I hope that you uh, took something away from this. Uh, I hope that you are able to improve on my methodology. And if you found a solution for this wiggling issue, please let me know. Hit me in the comments. Um, I'd appreciate it. Uh, I'm always willing to learn something new. Um, so yeah, if you figure this out, please let me know. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful afternoon. Be nice to yourselves and each other.